Hello coders, welcome to episode 172 of the How to Code Well podcast. Today we're going to be talking about web development and whether or not it's going to survive in 10 years time. Will web development die in 10 years? Before we get into that question though, let's talk about the changelog. These are things that I've been doing for the howtocodewell.net platform over the last uh, week or so in the evenings and weekends. Now I did say before that we have finished the staging deployment phase. However, I'm going to have to take that back because I've hit an issue that I only discovered when I was doing the manual testing of the new howtocodewell.net platform. And this issue is around Kubernetes and it's around S3 buckets and the volume configuration. It's not quite what I expected, not quite right. And this just basically says that, hey, automated testing is great, but manual testing, sometimes you just need to go through the whole whole thing manually and eyeball everything because this wasn't picked up through the automated checks. This is to do with configuration of environments. So I probably could have done an integration test for this, but hey, it slipped the net. So I'm having to deal with that before we move on to the pre-production phase, unfortunately. On a plus side, however, we have been dealing with and investigating ways to fix deprecation uh, notices from PHP uh, 5, sorry, PHP Symphony 5.4. That's where we want to upgrade the platform to. We're on 5.3 at the minute, but there's a, a wave of deprecation notices that I have to deal with and, and fix. And we did a lot of investigation work on the last live stream on Tuesday, and we actually got through quite a few, which was great. I also had a fantastic discussion about AWS certifications with the live chat as well. Hey, I'll put the link down in the show notes below if you want to uh, watch that. Okay, so there's uh, two other things that I want to discuss before we get into the web development. Uh, will it die in 10 years time? And that is two things that I've been playing with uh, code quizzes and bite-sized dev tips. A code quiz is something that I'm, these are experiments. These are things that I'm playing with at the minute. A code quiz is something that I'm going to be putting out every working day. That's the plan anyway. And uh, it's a, basically a poll on Twitter or on Instagram. So if you're not following uh, How to Code Well on those, please do so at How to Code Well on both things. So these this is a poll that I'm going to put out once a day. It's going to be an Instagram story and it's going to be just you know, a tweet. And it's going to be a question about a specific, any kind of specific coding thing, right? So I've been doing HTML and I've been doing PHP. The idea is that perhaps, perhaps if I have a chance that I might do a video recapping the questions and giving the, explaining the answers in more depth, perhaps maybe once every two weeks or once every month. But that will all be time permitting. That will all be t time permitting. The other thing that I've been doing is a bite-sized dev tip. Now, this is a tip that uh, I'm be I've been putting out on Instagram. This is a Instagram post. It's kind of like a cheat sheet, if you will, about a specific thing in, in programming or in web development. I've been focusing heavily on uh, HTML at the minute. So I have a bunch of these things ready to go, and I'll be pushing one out every week and it's going to be explaining about uh, a specific thing in HTML with examples and explanations and so forth. There's also going to be at the end of this um, interview questions that I'm going to be putting out on Instagram too. So do check out that at How to Code Well on Instagram and also on Twitter. Right. Let's talk about whether or not web development will die in 10 years because some people, some people think that uh, that will happen. My opinion on this is that that is complete baloney, complete horseradish. It's just not going to happen. Web development is going to stay here for, well, it's probably going to exist longer than I will. <laughs> and there are, there's a good few reasons why this is going to happen. First of all, programming the web used to be just programming things for the consumption on laptops and desktops. That's where it used to be. This is back in the day when it was all HTML, sort of very basic HTML3, HTML4, um, and we were using really, really new technologies back then, right? It's a lot more than that. 
it's a lot more than that. Web one used to be just very static, very read only. And then we had web two. Now we're moving into web three. I've done videos on the explanations of these things, but that just shows you the level of progression. So it's now, you know, much more than just what you see on a desktop computer. The whole responsive first design thing took it into a completely different domain, right? Different space. We're now having to design and architect applications, not just websites, but applications that can run on mobile applications, mobile phones and tablet devices. In the future, this is going to explode into other things as well. Virtual reality and um, augmented reality. They're all going to be using technologies that have spun off from or are still using technologies in web development in the web development space. Right. So web development is kind of the basis for all these new ideas and the new innovations and new technologies coming forward. And uh, if anybody is seeing any of these uh, headlines, you know, web development will die in 10 years. Just just don't don't pay any attention to them. So another thing, another reason why web development is still going to be around is the APIs and the fact that you can write these APIs in front end languages as well as back end languages. JavaScript, for example, has really pushed web development forward into the whole, let's use one programming language and then be able to write that on not only the front end, but the back end, but also in different devices as well. And do this in a cross platform kind of manner. So where you have native code, so for example, you're writing it specifically for the device, i.e. for um, iOS or, or Android, there is also cross-platform, which means that you can write it in a single language and then that goes and compiles down to the, the various different platforms that you uh, configure it to work on. This has opened the door into various different, different technologies and different innovations, and they're all coming back to web development as the basis. This is why I think it is incredibly important that everybody learns HTML. Why? Because HTML is the foundation of web development. Both front-end developers and back-end developers need to have an appreciation of HTML. Certainly React developers need to because of the component side of things. So cross-platform APIs and the fact that programming is far more now than just the desktop or laptop, the, the single 16 inch display, right? It's far more than that. If you're looking at a website, you expect it to work flawlessly on a mobile application, as well as a tablet on any screen size. And we're moving beyond screens as well. And we're using APIs as a means of communicating between different devices across the internet. So web development is far more than just what you see on the desktop. Other reasons why I think it will just continue getting stronger and stronger is the actual programming languages themselves. PHP, for instance, is incredibly old. It's actually, it's, and it's moving into directions that I never dreamt it would move into. I'm so pleased it's got over the hump of the PHP 6 <laughs> issues. It's now moving straight into PHP 9, right? So we're already on PHP 8. That's huge compared to where it was with PHP 5. And there are so many projects that are that I'm aware of that are moving into PHP 7.4 and then moving straight into PHP 8 afterwards. And they are anticipating PHP 9 going forward. This is a breath of fresh air. It's also, it's also making the programming language itself far more type safe, which is what the, I guess the, dare I say the word trend, the theme of programming languages are moving into. So for example, JavaScript has TypeScript, right? It's all about type safety and making things more rigid and more performant because once you've got the, the scaffolding around what is this type supposed to be, you can actually make things more performant as well. So the improvements in those programming languages that have been around for quite a long time 
are um, indications that the whole web development space is not going to fade away. Um, so that's that's one thing. Obviously, as I mentioned, JavaScript is constantly evolving. It is getting better and it's being used on different platforms. The same with uh, CSS. You just have to look at the animations that are available on CSS. You know, you can actually create some really awesome interactive games using CSS, using JavaScript, things that I just wouldn't even dream of doing, say, five years ago or 10 years ago. So the way forward is is looking incredibly bright and incredibly um, full of these great innovations and great ideas, things that go beyond my wildest dreams. So if you're a PHP developer, it's you're in a you're in a good spot because you've got a lot of legacy applications that need to be pushed forward. If you're a JavaScript developer, you can move into various different devices, mobile devices. You can also work on the server. You can work on mobile games or just you know just general games as well that are built in JavaScript. There you can even write open. Um, <laughs> I'm getting excited now. You can even write operating systems in these things. They are insanely clever now, these programming languages. And then of course you've got Python, you've got other languages around the sides of those things that do all sorts of crazy things. You've got the innovations moving in with AWS. You've got the whole CI, CD movement. Everything is getting better and better and better. So web development is not gonna be replaced and it's not going to be removed. And you as a programmer are gonna still be in, an, in a career. So don't worry about these co-pilot things that happen. They're just keeping junior developers junior, in my opinion. <laughs> so you want to make you want to make sure that you are learning the skills and getting better yourself and improving. And you want to be you want to be looking for the new things that are coming up coming forward, as well as still helping legacy code uh, get better and better and better. Now, why do I say all of this? Well, I've been in the development space for over 20 years, right? So I've been writing, I've been writing PHP for more than 20 years. That's nuts, right? And, I, and I, I'm still working on things that use jQuery. I'm still working on things that use very old versions of PHP. And I'm still working on things that use uh, various different HTML tags that don't exist anymore. And those are being improved and they are being replaced and they are being, they are, they are evolving into the latest versions of things, okay? So when you start seeing that things are getting better and upgrading and just constant, constantly getting better, it gets a bit of a joke when you see all these headlines like, will web development die in 10 years or, or don't bother learning to code because it'll all be automated for you in the future. It certainly won't. Technologies like Copilot, they're great, they're fantastic. So this is the Google automated thing. So it will search through, um, sorry, not Google. I said Google, GitHub. It's the GitHub uh, automation tool where you start typing and it will suggest things uh, for you and it will write code for you on your behalf. Nine times out of 10, it's not great. And yes, those things will improve and they'll get better. But really, you as a developer need to learn those skills yourself because you're going to be the one debugging it. And debugging it is a skill that you need to have, right? And this is the same for any backend or front-end technology. So I don't I don't see Copilot as a threat. I see it getting better, but I don't see it being a threat. Where I see it being used um, is around build tools. I, I reckon the build tools are going to get to a point where as developers, we can just run a command and all sorts of things just get built in the back end or the front end and it gets spun up. So for example, um, Docker Compose, for instance, you can just specify these things and then run Docker Compose up and then suddenly you have a whole fleet of servers running locally or wherever you're, you're writing the command. So things like that I see automated and m much better and uh, they'll be able to glue bits and pieces together so you wouldn't have to do all of the uh, the boring work, right? You can work on the actual things that are interesting. And that's where I think that divide will be. But we are moving into a different topic and that is automated code and whether that is a danger or a risk to us. Now, perhaps I'll be talking more about that in the next episode. 
Who knows? You'll just have to wait and see for the next time on episode 173 that we're, we'll be on next week. Anyway, I've got to go. Happy coding, everybody. Take care. Cheers. And I'll see you again soon. And I'm going to do the whole slimy YouTuber thing. If you don't follow me on How to Code Well at Twitter and Instagram, you're going to be missing out on those code quizzes and those dev tips. So do check out those as well as all the other episodes on howtocowell.fm. Take care, everybody. Speak to you again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.